Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the ThinkBook 13S from Lenovo. This is a laptop that sits in between the Lenovo consumer devices and their more expensive ThinkPads. So you get a relatively decently priced laptop with really nice build quality. And we're going to be taking a look at what this device can and can't do here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in on loan from Lenovo. So when we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. There are a number of different configurations for this laptop, but the one they sent us is probably the one I would start with. Uh, the price on this one at the moment is $832.30 on the Lenovo website. Uh, that's a promotional price, but I would expect to be able to find this configuration at around that price uh, at various retailers. Uh, this has a 13-inch 1080p IPS display, decent viewing angles on it. It's decently bright. We have my studio lights on it right now, so it might look a little dimmer than it might be in your home. Uh, but overall, it's a good-looking display, as many of these Lenovo devices are. It is not a touch display, but it does have a matte finish to it. It's got a quad-core i5-8265U processor, so that's decent. It has a 8 gigabyte RAM configuration at this price point. Uh, the RAM you can upgrade if you take it apart, but there's only a single slot for memory. So you have to pull out whatever memory is in there and then put in a larger one. Uh, that means this will run in single channel configuration. It has a 256 gigabyte solid state drive that is also upgradable. It's an M2 NVMe. And the build quality on the ThinkBook is very nice. It is all metal but it's not that heavy, 2.95 pounds or 1.34 kilograms. The display goes all the way back to your desk here, so you have a lot of different positions you can put it into, so that is good to see. Not a touch display, but otherwise uh, very functional. You also have a number of ports on here, including your power port. Uh, you have an HDMI connector here for connecting external displays. There is also a USB Type-C connector, but not a Thunderbolt connector that we sometimes see on some of the higher-end Lenovo laptops. Uh, they say this supports video and data. However, video was not working in our testing. There could be a BIOS update or something that needs to come down for that to work. But right now, in our test, it didn't work, but their spec sheet says it will. Uh, note, though, that it doesn't support power delivery. So if you hook it up to a dock that provides power, you will still need to connect up the device's power adapter to get power delivered to the laptop. You have a headphone jack over here. On the other side, you've got two full-size USB 3 ports. Uh, the speakers are at the bottom. They sound pretty decent. Good stereo separation. Not a lot of deep bass, but adequate enough for watching videos and having conference calls and that sort of thing. So uh, altogether, not a bad little package here. I like the keyboard, as I always do on these Lenovo devices. It's backlit, uh, nice big keys. They're well spaced apart here with nice travel to them. Uh, the trackpad here is equally nice and very accurate. Uh, no concerns at all, really, with any of the input devices on it. They've also integrated a fingerprint sensor into the power button. So if you just rest your finger on the power button, you can unlock with Windows Hello and get into the laptop to start working. And like other Lenovo devices we've looked at recently, there is a physical shutter on the webcam. So if you've been putting tape on your web camera to block it, uh, you can just keep that shutter closed on this one to physically block that camera lens if you want. So that's something I know a lot of people are interested in and you have it there. Uh, battery life on this one doing basic work tasks is about uh, nine hours or so. Uh, that is doing word processing, some web browsing and that sort of thing with the display turned down a little bit. Uh, you might be able to squeeze a little bit more out of it depending on what those tasks are, but it's easy to get through a work day with this one. The battery life is definitely adequate, which is nice to see here for the price point. So altogether, a nice little laptop. Let's move on now, though, to performance. We've got a lot of stuff to check out, so let's start off with web browsing. Uh, we took a look at the nasa.gov homepage. Everything came to life very quickly and rendered up nicely. It has 802.11 AC wireless on board, of course, and if you wanted to, you could plug in Ethernet with a USB adapter. Altogether, a good web browsing experience. We also took a look at YouTube and watched some 1080p 60 video. No drop frames there. Everything seemed to work well for media playback that you might do on YouTube, Netflix, and on other websites. That is to be expected with an i5 processor, but it's always good to check, of course. 
On the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 166.3. That puts it pretty much in line with a few other recent i5-based machines we've looked at recently. So altogether, I think performance on this one is going to be more than adequate to do all of the basic tasks that you might do with a laptop while you're working. All right, let's move on now to gaming. This is not a gaming laptop, but you can run some stuff on it, maybe. Uh, so we've got Fortnite running here. Uh, if you want a playable Fortnite session, you're going to have to turn the resolution down to 480p. Uh, there we got around 35 to 55 frames per second, but as you can see here, it looks pretty ugly. Uh, but that's the reality of a laptop that lacks a discrete GPU like this one. This is a work machine, not necessarily a gaming machine. Uh, but you will have some luck with maybe some older games like Half-Life 2. Uh, that game came out about 10 years ago, 12 years ago now. Uh, we got uh, frame rates there at around 90 to 100 frames per second at 1080p. So that worked uh, just fine. Uh, Rocket League is another one that you might be able to get running at a decent frame rate. Uh, at 720p, we were seeing frame rates between 50 and 70 frames per second. So the Intel GPU here is capable of some gaming prowess, but not a lot. So this is not going to be something that'll play all of your AAA games, but some casual games should work well. And again, some older games should play nicely on this as well. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 7,389. And that puts it almost exactly in line with what we saw out of the IdeaPad Flex 14 we looked at about a week ago. Uh, fairly similar numbers here on both the CPU and GPU tests. Uh, this one is performing as we would expect it to, given what it has inside. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a score of 98.6% using the Firestrike version of that test. That is a passing grade. Uh, which was good to see, and that means the laptop will maintain its performance even under load for extended periods of time. So it looks like it has decent cooling and thermal performance. Uh, just know, though, that this is not a fanless laptop, of course, and as such, you want to keep this uh, bottom section clear. Uh, so putting it on carpet or something is not a good idea. You also want to keep this back section clear here as well for exhaust. Uh, it will make some noise when the fan is on, and it made a little more noise than we've been seeing on some of the other Lenovo laptops we've looked at. So if you put it under constant stress and load, uh, you will hear that high-pitched fan kind of running on this thing. There's no way to avoid that given the size of it. And it was a little bit noisier than some of the other ones we've looked at recently. Uh, and it's just something that comes with the territory when you have a relatively powerful i5 processor in a laptop as compact as this one. And we also booted up Kodi to see how well it performed with high-end video. You're looking at a 140 megabit per second HEVC file, uh, 4K at 10 bits, and it seems to be playing just fine with no drop frames. That is a hardware decoding function of its Intel processor, and that appears to be working just fine. So I don't think you'll have any video playback performance issues here at all. And we booted up Linux on this. We ran the most recent version of Ubuntu. I believe it's 19.04. It booted up fine. The video worked. We had uh, audio as well. But the one thing that did not work on this was Wi-Fi. Bluetooth, however, did work. Uh, the Wi-Fi radio inside is replaceable, so you could go out and get a replacement one that is more compatible with Ubuntu. But in our testing, we were not able to get the stock Wi-Fi adapter uh, to work with Linux. So just keep that in mind if you are planning to use this as a Linux device. It doesn't look like the Wi-Fi is going to be compatible out of the box. And overall, it's a pretty nice little laptop, I think, for the money. I like the build quality. I like the fact that it performs quite nicely and it's very lightweight as well. And it's really interesting just to see all these different SKUs that Lenovo introduces because for every laptop where you think, you know what, I wish they had this, they release a laptop with that. Uh, to try to meet whatever the market demands are in a number of different categories. And this one might appeal to folks who are looking for a uh, relatively low cost, but nicely built and high performing laptop that isn't all that heavy. It seems to check all of those boxes. So that's gonna do it for the ThinkBook 13S. They have a 14 inch version of this as well. Uh, and they also have some with Ryzen processors that might do a little bit better on gaming. We're going to try to get one of those in. I'm not sure if we'll be able to, but I will do my best to bring it in there to see how that one uh, might perform versus this one. But this is the smaller of the two, available only with an Intel processor. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.tv supporters. 
including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, emudev.org, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.